not to be uh, at the time transportation. Uh, my uh, visa got rejected first time last week. And, uh, I ended up going to London Sunday evening, handing in the paper Monday morning at 7 in the morning. It came out 7 p.m. The courier took it to Heathrow at 8. And I left at 9. And I arrived at 12 this morning. Got a Red Bull, but here I am. What I should be talking about is uh, supply chain management. And uh, I'll take a look at you on it. Within uh, DHL, I work in DHL supply chain. I work with contract logistics for retailers and mainly for fashion retailers. And what I should be talking about here is how do fashion retailers roll out their global supply chain countries like India, like China, Brazil, uh, Russia, Mexico, and how do they at the same time manage and optimize the supply chains in uh, Europe and North America and then with Europe the blue markets. I have four topics I shall be talking about. First of all, I think you know this a lot better than me, what are the global opportunities for retailers? Then, and three, which are more my area of expertise. Uh, what does this growth put of pressure on the supply chains? And thirdly, I talk about the agility and expertise required to manage the supply chains and optimize them. And then fourth, a conclusion. I should be able to do this in 25 to 30 minutes so we can have our, our coffee break just in time. If you look at what are the, 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 the opportunities for fashion re for retailers in the uh, US and Europe? Uh, they are limited to, to compared to the, to, the, to the opportunities in, in Asia, in Russia, and uh, in uh, South America. The growth is, is, is quite limited. We talk to 3 4% a year. And as a, as a result, they, they are, the retailers are looking for more smaller formats, discount retailers for growth, they look for e-com, and uh, if you look at it, uh, so e-com is, is sort of, at least in Europe, North America, the big driver of growth. Uh, you take a company like Gap, it's been a sort of a standstill for several years, uh, they see quite big expansion uh, in the e-com in the and are rolling that up to a lot of companies. Take more European retailers, the H&M, the Inditex, the Zara brand, and so on. The growth is coming more from the globalization. Opening a lot of stores in China, Brazil, Russia, and India also. And uh, I think uh, we find in Europe a lot of success stories where they have achieved uh, huge growth from the globalization. But in general, if you look at the European market itself, there's not a lot of growth. Uh, there's a big crisis or something important in the huge Southern Europe, Greece, Italy, and Spain, and, and so on. So the growth in Europe is limited. So as a result, most retailers, at least what I'm working with, uh, are looking for the overseas. countries like Brazil, Russia, and India, and China. I think the last five, six years, we've seen a lot of growth in, uh, in, uh, in China. A lot of the retailers went into China four, five, six years ago. And a lot of the projects we see at the moment are expanding. They're all in the tier one and the tier two cities, and they're now going into the, to the tier three and the tier four cities. We find companies like uh, Inditex have already now uh, you see the same type of figures with H&M and so on and so For a lot of companies, they have now been in China a number of years. They are growing very rapidly and uh, are such very successful. E-commerce is also growing a lot in China. What we also see is uh, now that companies also, last time I was in China, it was a couple of months ago, also some of uh, an expert of 
colleague of mine and, 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 and also said, if you're not in China today, it's probably too 